shifting gears for the next 30 minutes, Webster Griffin Tarpley joins us from Tripoli that's been under three plus months of bombardment to give us what's really happening there. Uh, and uh, I will open the phones up in the next segment after Tarpley's had a chance to give us a report for any questions you have on Libya specifically, quick questions for Tarpley because of time, but we want to hear from you. Toll-free number to join us, 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. Webster Griffin Tarpley, good to have you pop in with us today. Hi, Alex. How are you? Good, man. Well, we're hanging on here. Uh, the BBC is hyping you know, some great gains by the rebels uh, a little bit southwest of here. Uh, people here are very skeptical about that. The BBC has a track record of taking these manic statements by the, uh, the Benghazi Rebel Council and, and putting that on the air. Rather, there's here, a, uh, I think, a, a great deal of confidence by the Libyan government that the rebellion in the city of Misrata or Misurata was uh, that it's uh, in its uh, final throes. In other words, that uh, it's going to be over there in something like seven to ten days, and that was an important place for the rebels to go into because that is the steel mill. That is one of the biggest steel mills in Africa, and it is, as far as I know, capable of manufacturing the biggest steel tubing in the world, and this has to do with, with the uh, Gaddafi uh, project, right, infrastructure project called the Great Man-Made River which is $32 billion taking the water from under the Sahara Desert and piping that north towards Tripoli, Benghazi, and the other cities. So that, you know, in, in Yemen, we're told that within a couple of years, there's going to be no water in Yemen. And the, the guy that I heard talking about this, the expert, anyway, said that uh, it, that doesn't mean a shortage of water, but actually no water. So... The future of human life in Yemen may be very dubious, but in Libya, it is uh, assured, at least in the sense of water. And you've got to put in water as one of the main things that these NATO imperialists and... and oh, they've said with. that's the next thing they're going after globally is the blue gold. For those that don't know, uh, just what, 50,000 years ago, they know the Sahara was full of lakes and crocodiles and hippopotamus and all of it, and that, and that the water went underground uh, with desertification, uh, and, that, and that it's there, and Gaddafi's bringing it up and becoming a, right. a spoke for development all over Africa. That can't be allowed. Right, so that's, that's the vendetta they have going. So one of the key parts of that project, instead of just importing the stuff, they said, let's build our steel mill here in Misrata, right on the coast. You can get the raw materials in, but then we'll, we'll manufacture these huge tubes. So not Manesman of Germany, usually the gold standard for steel tubing, not somebody in Japan or, or in the Far East, but, but Libya, which had been one of the poorest if not the poorest in certainly in africa maybe the world stay there webster let's break it all down and where this is going and how he's handing out millions of firearms and gentlemen we're back live with webster griffin tarpley joining us from tripoli we've got some questions from listeners out there so it's not just old alex jones uh, bringing up points uh, the toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231 webster's leaving us at the bottom of the hour and I'm going to get into a whole bunch of other news I haven't covered yet and also take some of your calls. But Webster continuing, they want the water, they want the trillions in oil. Uh, obviously, uh, Madsen talked about, and I've seen some of this in the news, that uh, billions of dollars of Libyan government oil money that was invested with Goldman Sachs and others and Sarkozy was stolen, has, has been swindled. So they have another reason. It's more like a mafia hit taking him out. We have a constitutional crisis. Ron Paul, the congressman, the presidential candidate, agreed with us last hour that this is impeachable offense against Obama. Uh, but the, 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 the ruling class has gone collectively mad dog with hubris, or is it desperation? I, I want your view on that, where they are just getting more and more crazy, more and more out in the open, more and more naked, brazen, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, why is this being done? Well, let's, just on the uh, Obama issue, remember, he's, he's now long past the deadline on the War Powers Act, so that means he is impeachable, so please add that one to the bill of impeachment, along with, with a number of other uh, charges. We just passed 100 days of bombing, and uh, people here uh, have compared this to 
the bombing of Serbia back in 1999 went on, I believe, and it is believed here, for 68 or 69 days. And, of course, in that situation, there was no ground war. So Libya has successfully stood up under 100 days of NATO bombing with the attacks of al-Qaeda terrorists masquerading as pro-democracy rebels here on the ground. So Serbs, of course, notoriously tough, uh, but the conclusion is Libyans even tougher. So if uh, you look at uh, Libya, I think this is the last place in the world anybody would want to invade. Uh, and just a couple of other things historically. Uh, Libya is the country uh, which uh, was the victim of the, the first military use of poison gas was by Italian colonialists against Libya in the years after 1911. And in the course of a anti-colonial struggle, the Libyans had approximately one million casualties, um, uh, unbelievable uh, excesses of the Italian imperialists at, at that time. So what it shows you is that there's no limit to this resistance and the cohesion of it, of course, coming from the from the tribes. This included standing up against an electrified fence and minefield that went over just about the well, if not the whole length of the border between Libya and Egypt, but but a lot of it. So that's that's one thing. Now, in terms of the insanity of the ruling class, I have to point out the International Criminal Court, so called, and this guy Ocampo, uh, this this scoundrel, right, this faker, who has organized that thing into a kangaroo court internationally. Right? We're still waiting for the indictment of Bush, of Rumsfeld, of Cheney, of Wolfowitz, all the neocons who scheme to, you know, to, to bomb uh, Afghanistan and then to invade Iraq. Then no, no indictments on you know, 9-11 crimes or anything like that. But Ocampo sees it as his job to go after the, the, the people who, who resist this imperialist power, be it General Bashir of, uh, of Sudan or Milosevic. And the case of Milosevic of, of, of Serbia also reminds us that this place is it's a murder incorporated in its own right, that you get Milosevic there and then he mysteriously dies of an you know, unexpected heart attack. So, as of Yeah, they morning, gave him uh, anteater poison. Something like this. So they've, they've put out a, uh, an indictment of uh, Colonel Gaddafi, his son Saif, that is the surviving son Saif, because the other one was killed in, uh, with the same name, right? Saif uh, al Arab, Saif al Islam. Uh, the, the surviving one uh, uh, is, is, the, uh, is uh, also indicted, and uh, a guy called Sanusi, who's the, the security chief. And uh, this has got all of these, these uh, accusations. The stuff that this is based on is complete fabrication and complete hearsay. Uh, what happened in uh, the middle of February, February 12th, 13th, 14th, was that you had mobs of these uh, rebels, right, under al-Qaeda leadership, storming military bases and arms depots, especially in the Benghazi area, with the goal of starting off not armed, but to get armed as soon as they could, with the, with the, the various, um, you know, machine guns, uh, bazookas, uh, RPGs, tanks of any kind, artillery. So they might have been disarmed or unarmed at the beginning, but they didn't stay that way for long. And the goal was to have an armed rebellion. So there is absolutely no evidence that the, that the Libyan government uh, was wantonly out there, you know, shooting at civilians who were carrying out a peaceful protest. Uh, in fact, uh, quite the contrary, that, that, this, that, that there were peaceful protests that were going on that were somehow used as the, as the screen to begin some of these things, right, to get people together because there had been peaceful protests every week or so for some you know, economic grievance or something like this, very limited, and that then became the screen to go after them. So this is one side. The other side is this unbelievable, fictitious story about Viagra and rape, which I don't even want to go into, but it's, it, the thing falls to the ground of its own ridiculousness. I have here a, uh, a well-informed uh, Middle East source who says that Ocampo should stop talking about rape because he is uh, alleged to have uh, indulged in this himself, uh, and that somehow the, the International Criminal Court did some dirty things to get him uh, off the hook on some of those charges. So this man is an adventurer uh, and, and, a, and a fraud. Um, that is the uh, the new thing that is that has happened here today. It's, it's a it's a kangaroo court of, of hypocrites, and uh, I guess we 
have to be thankful that the U.S. is not in it, right? That's some little mercy in this, this whole terrible situation. The, the thing about the, the insanity of the ruling class is, is, of course, that, right? When you have a ruling elite that's based on derivatives and other kinds of finances, and when they see these castles of uh, cards that they've built come crashing down before their eyes, they go collectively insane, and they lash out. Let me just give you an example. In uh, September 21st, 1931, you had the bankruptcy of the British pound. The central event of the last depression was the bankruptcy of the pound in September 1931, when the Bank of England ceased gold payment. Uh, and then within about a week of that, I think a couple of days before, you have the Japanese uh, setting off this provocation so they can invade Manchuria. So the idea that, that um, when you see a, a really acute economic depression taking shape, this is often immediately accompanied by most insane military adventurism of the type that we, that we see here. Well, Webster... My, my issue is this. I mean, obviously, George Washington said don't get involved in foreign entanglements. But then Thomas Jefferson, my big hero, you know, when our ships are being attacked, then you go and defend them. But you, that's when you're attacked. And, of course, that happened, uh, uh, as you know, in the Mediterranean and, and uh, other areas dealing uh, and, and in the Gulf uh, dealing with uh, Arab pirates. But Gaddafi's not attacking us. He tried to work with the West. He's been cheated. Now... They have had generals in Congress, as you know, two days ago, uh, say, yes, we're getting ready for a ground invasion, but it's going to be humanitarian. I've confirmed it uh, from first a letter I got from Fort Hood, then we put out feelers to our sources over the telephone, then callers, that it was happening. Now it's pretty much admitted, and it's the very groups we were told. They've been told they are going in. Now, that could be stopped, but uh, talking to all the military statisticians, talking to... Uh, you know, military affairs reporter uh, previously before he did national security, Wayne Madsen, who just returned from Libya, and he's been there before. Uh, Gaddafi has bought, especially from the British, incredibly high-tech weapons. He's just waiting, and he's begging for the world to stop this, this, this naked aggression. But when the U.S. troops go in there, um, it is, it, it's going to probably, uh, many are estimating, going to be worse than Iraq, uh, dealing with these six million people armed, uh, with grenade launchers, RPGs, and that's just the citizens. Gaddafi reportedly has very nasty anti-tank weapons that he bought from France and England and, and the Russians as well. Some of the latest stuff, and these are small that one man uh, can carry uh, that are, that are going to just that are reportedly DU tip. So they're not going to be fighting just Iraqis with AK-47s. Uh, and uh, even if they try to go door to door, kicking in doors to confiscate the guns, house to house, if one percent of the six million population fights back, that's hundreds of thousands of combatants. Uh, this this could make. Uh, this could make uh, Iwo Jima and places like that uh, look like a picnic. It's an act of incalculable folly if they do it. And, and above all, the, the, the really terrible thing about it is out of all the places in the Middle East, this, this is a population that wants economic development. They're not interested in uh, you know, the more benighted forms of Islamic fundamentalism. It's a secular state. Uh, it's based on economic development. They, they have this political system which they will describe as the equivalent of a New England town meeting. And the globalists hate that. They, every time they get in charge, they do put the Muslim extremist in. I mean, I mean, look at what they do in every country. This is incredible. And, and again, I think I told you that the, the Roman Catholic bishop is concerned about what, what might happen to, the, to the, uh, the Catholics here. There are a lot of Filipino guest workers, a lot of them are Catholic, so the, there's a lot of social services from the Bishop of Tripoli, Giovanni Martinelli, and he, um, you know, he's concerned about the, the Islamic fundamentalists coming in here. And uh, what you'll hear from the Libyan government, I think, is very important for people to bear in mind. There is an alliance between the CIA and the Muslim Brotherhood, and the Muslim Brotherhood are the benighted ones. Those are the backward uh, opponents of, uh, of modern civilization. Uh, in the Middle East in general, according to people that I've uh, talked to here of various uh, nations, uh, you've got the Iranian networks, the pro uh, the pro Ahmadinejad network. Stay there, yeah. Let's break down the factions from Tripoli with Webster. I don't mean to get off on other issues, but oh, you got to stay longer now because I promise to go to calls for you. So hopefully you can stay in the next segment. This is a short one. Sure. Uh, it's like a time warp on this show. With, but 
it, it just government at every level just just doesn't care about the law anymore and that always i guess happens when you go into these degenerate phases well i, I mean certainly one one thing you see here is just anarchy right you've, you've got on the one side you've got a, 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 a government which is functioning on the whole rather well given the circumstances on the other hand in, in benghazi you've got you know 35 factions and and they, you know they they're trying to get each faction is trying to get nato to bomb the other faction by sending in false reports to nato and then you've got in the world right at the level of the un you got total total anarchy there because there is this un charter it does say the only way that they can apply military force is supposed to be for threats to international peace and security and not anything to do with the internal affairs of sovereign states. So they basically trampled that. So the Security Council has violated the charter, and there's the problem with that whole system, that there's no uh, mechanism to, to, you know, to strike down an, uh, uh, what you'd call an unconstitutional decision by the, by the, uh, by the, the, the Security Council. So this, a lot of people here say, get out of the U.N., right? Get, create a parallel institution or just get out of it. Uh, the, the prestige of the U.N. could hardly be at a lower point than it is here. And what about again, the Nobel Committee? I mean, it'd be like giving Hitler or Stalin a Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, I, you know, maybe some of them are going to resign, or maybe, I don't know, maybe some of them will, will do something to draw the consequences of their, of their idiocy. The other thing, though, is remember, when you're in a world depression, and we are, then that's when, uh, you know, the respect for law breaks down. Look at the 1930s. Depression leads to dictatorship and... Uh, and the you know the domination of, of you know unbridled caprice and unbridled willfulness by some you know powerful dictator or other figure, and then that leads to world war. So we're stuck right in the middle of that right now. Well, it looks like they're planning to go in with the ground forces. They're hoping they can assassinate Gaddafi, but obviously he's scurrying around to different uh, warrens. So uh, the, he's good at hiding. Doesn't look like that's going to work too well. This is again who has survived for uh, 42 years in a hot corner right and there have been you know more assassination attempts than you can count right Reagan tried to kill him with an air raid in 1985 killed his daughter the British uh, gave a hundred thousand pounds to an al-qaeda group in 1995-96 tried to kill him didn't get him killed some civilians and it just goes on and and on and and uh, now we've got this terror the terror that uh, the arrow that flieth by day and the terror that stalketh by night and the terror that stalketh by night around here is the nato bombing which has been contained but uh uh Thierry Maison was on the re on the television here last night and uh obviously NATO NATO didn't like what he was saying as they went and bombed one of the relay towers of the television signal and again, tell folks who that is for those that don't know. Terry Maison is one of the first people in the world to say that there was no Boeing at the Pentagon. In other words, in terms of 9-11 truth, he's one of, one of the first, right, uh, very early on, uh, talking about... Wow, he is, he, he's, he, he is inside Tripoli? Yeah. I got to hear about this, then phone calls on the other side. Uh, from Tripoli, live, Webster Griffin Tarpley. Stay with us. Any other things uh, that you can report to us that you think are very important from Tripoli uh, and uh, where you see this going? Well, I, I think we pretty much uh, covered it. The, the, um, the, the determination here is very great, and they, they, they think they're winning, and uh, they're fiercely proud of the fact that they've stood up to the NATO bombing for quite a bit longer than Serbia, and there's also been a, a ground war going on. So, uh, again, looking at those uh, assault rifles and those RPGs and that uh, tribal structure, I think it's the last place in the world anybody in his right mind would want to invade, and I, I sincerely hope that this won't happen. And, again, I would urge people, get, get busy if the congressman is going to be around for one of these uh, Fourth of July recess town meetings get in there and say this has to end this is a this is a crime against humanity this is just savage barbarity and uh it, it it's uh it's really you a, mean a it's wait, wait, wait. you mean it's a peace prize humanitarian aid mission yeah right
Right. And and that guy, of course, uh, he, he's impeachable for a number of reasons. But one of the one of the ones in the first rank is violating the War Powers Act. I'm sorry, that's a public law. President shall take care that the laws be faithfully enforced, not violate them. Impeachment. Well, you said it, Webster. Uh, how long are you going to be in uh, Libya? Well, uh, no, let's you know, never know what happens here, right? Inshallah, <laughs> depends. So, Tarmley, are you going to be joining the forces of Muammar Gaddafi? No, I don't think so. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a, uh, an observer, of, you know, a foreign reporter. Of no, no, I know. I'm joking, but I can, I can see you like the, uh, you know, b b b brigades in the Spanish Civil War, Tarpley out there with a helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm not a combatant in any way. I'm just a, a commentator. I understand that. Well, you've got a lot of courage. You know, you were privately, and I, I've been invited by some aid groups and media groups previously, um, Cynthia McKinney did and others, to go. Like I was invited to go with her uh, to Tripoli. And I have to say, um, it's not even a, so much as a fearful thing. I, I fear more bed bugs in a Tunisian airport and the cigarette smoke uh, then I fear, uh, you know, uh, being shot down in an aircraft or being killed in a bombardment. I actually actually fear going through customs when I come back more than I, uh, I just, you know what, I hate air travel these days. Uh, but uh, I, I'm tempted to go over there just to, I'm told North Africa is beautiful in its own uh, mysterious oh, way. Oh, this is, this is the, the golden south here, right? This is the... The Mediterranean and all of its splendor. There are these beautiful trees with red flowers on them. You look at the uh, the port of Tripoli, this basin that they've got. It, it, in the afternoon, it turns silver and gold with the Mediterranean sun. Palm trees everywhere. It's not humid. It's uh, the temperatures have been, I would say, moderate, sort of in the 70s to 80s. Uh, and again, a very modern city and uh again i'm amazed that there's not animus against the nato uh foreigners coming from nato state because with what they these nato guys have done to to libya you'd think that foreigners would be getting lynched but there's there's not even the breath of this there, there's a, a desire to have have people come i mean you would be extremely welcome i think you would be uh no it sounds like they're pretty uh, it sounds like they're pretty sophisticated yeah, they, uh, these are uh, highly educated uh, people. Uh, there, there was a whole program of sending people to Europe, to the United States, to Australia, to Malaysia, to all kinds of places to build up an educated working uh, population of you know people who can contribute. And uh, you really see the benefits. The uh, the, uh, the the people who are who are in in the top positions, uh, you know, date back to the to the late sixties and seventies. But they're their children and the other sort of younger age cohorts are all people with, uh, you know, they've all got, you know, degrees from, from this or that U.S. or European university. You know, you can pick French or Italian or English. Uh, all of those are going to get you just about anything you need. Wow. And uh, meanwhile, we're told that uh, it's another evil Middle Eastern group that has to be destroyed. Yeah, and again, and the people that you're supposed to support are indeed these characters with the beards, the benighted ones, whose favorite occupation was setting the roadside bombs in uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq. And of course, when they were in Iraq, they were killing more Iraqis than U.S., but they killed quite a few uh, U.S. troops also. But uh, we're told Al-Qaeda is now good. I mean, we're not going to agree with that, but that's because we're un-American. Uh, let's... <laughs> Let's let's take a few calls for Webster sure. Griffin Tarpley Tarpley dot net. Uh, let's talk to Jack in Pennsylvania. Jack, you're on the air. Hello, um, I have a question for Webster. Um, do you think you recently you just said that there's no animus towards the foreigners? Do you think this has anything to do with uh, like water fluoridation programs or anything that are going on in the Middle East? Because no, I, and I have no no idea about any of that. It, I think it's just that this is a very educated and civilized uh, population and they've, they've had the benefits of progress right they went from the again at the very lowest rung of the of the sort of international statistics to being where they are now which is they are the most educated most developed population in africa bar none and somehow that's that's a crime and, and how you can accuse a government that's done that of having no merit you know and have, it has to go i it just makes no sense it's a orwellian 
It is Orwellian. Uh, Jack, anything else? Uh, no, I just want to say you're a big fan, Alex. Keep doing your thing. All right, thank you, sir. Appreciate your call. Uh, Al in Illinois, you're on the air. Yes, hi. I'm... Something weird's going on with the phone system. The calls are really, really loud. And he dropped. Okay, Jim in Georgia, go ahead. You're on the air. And then Chance in India. Indiana, oh, close enough. Goodness. Hey, go ahead, Jim. Okay, uh, immense love and respect to you both, uh, Alex Jones and Webster Tarkley. Thank oh. you. It's wonderful to be able to speak to you. Uh, ran into Alex Jones real quick. Ran into Alex Jones on about DU and uh, September the 11th. Uh, and you know, I've been a truth seeker for just about my entire life. Uh, my thing, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous because it's, it's hard to get a hold of you. I'm so glad the word and the message, and you have a lot of callers. But um, <clears throat> I, my point is, um, uh, where's the Christian voice in uh, all these beautiful souls overseas being killed by these uh, wimpy, um, I want to cut, but wimpy little drones that are just being sent everywhere like a, they're flown by cowards. And uh, what kind of way is that to fight a war? Uh, we have, let's see, why can't people see the same people who created these derivatives, uh, these fake derivatives, and sold them all over the world? They're going to bring the drones here. Uh, that's the way it's going to work. It's not going to stop over there. It's coming here. Why can't people see what's going on? Well, this was the first big issue in World War One because now people were just killing each other in mass. There was zero chivalry uh, involved. And then World War Two, the dropping of bombs on civilians as targets and uh, both sides doing it. And, and then now today, uh, you have people thousands of miles away in an office park flying drones, you know, going in and killing men, women and children and calling it uh, humanitarian. Uh, more and more as we become removed from the war through the uh, technological uh, you know, apparatus, uh, it allows more and more of a delusional, oh, this is peace. Uh, and uh, because people aren't seeing the sausage uh, being made. And I think it, it, it shows the, we have been such a wealthy society that we've become decadent and slob-like. Uh, in one group, other people are working harder than ever as the economy begins to un unravel. And so you kind of have those two worlds colliding. And, you know, most Americans don't have passports. They've never traveled. We kind of live in our own bubble here. Uh, and I think that's what's happening. I appreciate your call, Jim. Uh, any uh, comments on that, uh, Webster? Well, the, the voice of Christianity here is the, the Roman Catholic bishop who, uh, you know, points out that you can't have Christianity and bombs. These don't mix. Sorry to anybody who thinks they do. Uh, you know, that was the Prince of Peace. And that uh, under Gaddafi, uh, say what they will, there is uh, total religious freedom and, a, and actually a very tranquil religious situation. This country is 99% Sunni Muslim, and uh, th th this is not an issue. And the government is, you know, respects religion, but is not based on any, any uh, you know, religious basis not a theocracy this is a secular state let's talk to chance in indiana you're on the air go ahead hey how you guys doing good um alex want to say good job yesterday at the state capitol i watched you guys online thank you and, uh, guys did an excellent job uh real quick couple things um about libya i wanted to uh let you and your viewers know reaffirm more you guys are talking about whether we are or aren't going to libya it's kind of confirmed now um, I recently had it confirmed to me through a family member that he is um, going to a training, uh, you know, like a, a two-week training thing within the United States, and then he is going to Libya. So it just more to more reaffirm that there are reports out there and other stuff through Fort Hood and stuff. Um, and then second for uh, Dr. Tarpley, I just wanted to, uh, and you, Alex, I wanted to ask both of you uh, real quick what you would what do you think the best thing for the common person, you know, such as myself, to do as far as affecting uh, local, you know, federal legislation to, to get us out of, of uh, you know, Libya and, and these other countries that we just have no business being in? Well, Webster talks about we only need, what, 40 or so votes to get the... votes. You shift 30 votes in the House, 
and you've passed the uh, the bill to cut off the funds. Now that doesn't, you know, there's still the Senate, right, and then there's still Obama. But uh, what, what Obama is doing right now is he's 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 bootlegging money. In other words, there's money lying around in the Pentagon, and they 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 redirect it, which really is illegal. But um, I I don't want mean to say that that having this uh, funding cut off past the House would be the end of it, it probably wouldn't, because Obama would keep, you know, squirming and, and uh, lying and, and whatever. But uh, it would be a big step, and uh, 30 votes. Now, some people are going to be interested in the fact that, that the rebels are from al-Qaeda. Other people are going to be interested in the fact that black Africans and black Libyans are getting preferentially massacred by these people in Benghazi. And, uh, you know, there some other people may have just humanitarian concerns. There are still such people. But um, shift 30 votes and make that a project for the for the 4th of July uh, recess because this stuff has got to end somewhere, right? If the U.S. is simply just on a on this uh, rampage through the world, right, it, eventually you're going to collide with some large thing that resists and can defend itself, be it Russia or China or Iran or, or whatever it is. So the quicker we end this stuff, the better it is. And the the uh, political calculation is that you know 180 votes in the House to cut off money for a war in the middle of the war that's unprecedented. That's the best result of that kind that I've seen in my lifetime. They can't say that you're you're cutting off the money to the troops in harm's way because Obama has guaranteed that there are no troops in harm's way. Well, there really are, but, but we'll take him at his word. There are no troops in harm's way, so there's no political price to be paid for cutting off. The funding. So cut off the funding. Dear Congressman, cut off the funding. And if, if Obama persists, the one thing that the House can do, if he just says, I'm just going to ignore you and keep spending, because I, I can stop this in the Senate, well, what the House can do is impeach him. So impeach him. Uh, I, I appreciate your call, caller. If you got uh, any other comments, I'd like to hear before we go to Keith. But... Look, this is how the psychology works, especially with a country like the United States that has taken on preemptive war as part of our macho uh, identity. I mean, it's the opposite of what this country was founded on. But once we're committed and once the U.S. troops start dying, the social engineers know the opposite's going to happen. There, there isn't going to be more calls for pulling out. It's going to suddenly be we've got to hang that guy, Gaddafi, and then they'll say that they're, you know, raping Easter bunnies with elves, you know, attending and that sea serpents were seen involved with it, you know, uh, so, so, so they'll make up some ridiculous story of baby incubators, you know, Santa Claus, things like that. Um, and, and that's why they want to go ahead and just get in place, get it ready, get the intel, move the troops in and say, this is not a war. He killed our humanitarian troops rolling in on Abrams tanks. Uh, and uh, it, it's just it's just incredibly cold-blooded. Uh, Webster, any comments on that? Webster Tarpley, can you hear me? Sorry, I missed the last part. Well, no, I mean, they know once they get ground troops in there that then we'll, people will say, well, we got to in yes. it to win it. You know, we got to get it done. Well, it's, it, this is going to be a horrifying uh, experience. I, I hope we don't have to see this. I, I really don't. So do something now, right? Let us work now while it is called the day, for the night cometh in which no man can work, and no woman either. Anything else, Chance? Uh, uh, yeah, I had one quick thing. I, that you know, it's good stuff, guys. I appreciate you answering my question and getting it out uh, out there for us, you know, common folks. And uh, I just wanted to say that I'm going to call back, try to call back sometime in the week. I wanted to discuss with you that video in regards to the video you showed the other day, uh, playing Doppelist, and some interesting stuff I found about Forum for the Future, the three groups that are heading up the campaign that produce some of these uh, films out. Yeah, there. Webster, that's these Malthusian films they show kids that actually show an incredible tyranny where you can't travel, you don't get meat, everything's surveilled, the, the, there's basically families don't exist, and they show it with straight faces to children. And uh, now uh, they're expanding into Maryland, where you live, adds environmental literacy in high schools. Everything is political correctness. Everything is uh, flogging humanity, teaching, teaching you to hate humanity and that carbon is evil. Uh, and, and, and now Maryland schools, there'll be even less time. Uh, and California is moving to get rid of homework. 
uh, so there can be more time for the kids to watch television and be programmed that way. Uh, uh, what can you say about just the absolute Malthusian brainwashing? Well, we have a tremendous social crisis, and we have a depraved uh, elite. Some of them are monetarists, and some of them are Malthusians, and... Uh and th that uh, neither one of those will allow the survival of civilization as we've known it. So I've, I've written up, you know, on my ideas on the, on my uh, website there, tarpley.net. So I commend that to your attention. Tarpley, we're going to come back and take a final call. Cancer or two. surges in body scanner operators. TSA launches cover up. This is a big, big, big deal. That uh, the, because this has been in the Boston airport where this center's in and around for all, all, close to eight years, or I don't know, late 2002, do the math, I guess more than eight years. Yeah, wow, yeah, eight years. And so they've been covering all this up. That's big news on that front. Webster, I'm going to take a final call for you, but do you have any comments on that? Well, do you remember the, the implementation of the body scanners was uh, the Mutalab case, right? The Christmas Day underwear bomber. That was the thing that pushed the uh, the whole system into the body scanners. And you remember the eager lobbying of Michael Chertoff, the former head of Homeland Security, who was out there as a as a paid lobbyist, but doing commentaries on all the television networks. And, and, uh, and of course, we didn't need body scanners, did we? We needed a mole detector at the FBI and the CIA to find out who were the, what, which federal agency was the one that said, no, Mutalab has got to keep that visa. We've got eyes on him. He's going to lead us to the big fish. That was that interagency meeting with the State Department, at least claimed later. And this was, uh, I guess, Under Secretary of State Kennedy, that the State Department wanted to pull his visa, which would have kept him off the plane. And some other federal agency uh, said, no, no. No, they said intelligence <laughs> agency. Yeah, help get him on the plane. Jumping back to calls, uh, Lily... Uh, in France, you're on the air with Webster Griffin Tarpley. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Alex, for taking my call. I know you're uh, really busy, busy there manning headquarters. Um, yeah, I've noticed uh, across the street over there in uh, Pakistan, Iran, and Afghanistan that they had a meeting last weekend in Iran, a uh, president from Pakistan and Karzai, and they've all agreed to uh, get together and not allow the Americans to set up their bases there until 2017. Has Webster heard anything about that at all? Or yeah, yeah Webster, like what she's saying is in the news. So the whole world is lining up now against uh, the U.S., England, and, and the Europe. And as you know, Pakistan has run to China, uh, and so is Saudi Arabia with Russia. Go ahead, Webster. I'm, I'm afraid I'm not as, as well informed as I usually like to be just because of the, the difficulty here. We had a couple of days when the Internet was down completely because of the wonderful uh, NATO contributions to democracy playing havoc with the, with the Internet here, and, and even telephones difficult in some areas, but uh, it's, it's bounced back. So I, I would just say the, the general idea is that uh, Karzai, whatever he is of Afghanistan, he's he's you know, looking to China and Russia for his future, and Pakistan, of course, to China and perhaps also to to some others. And uh, Iran, I, I've been, been discussing uh, Ahmadinejad of Iran, and it turns out that he is the uh, the industrial, military, scientific complex of of Iran. It, it sort of you know modernizing. Side. Remember, he's a military guy, comes from the Revolutionary Guard. And against him, you've got Rafsanjani, who is corruption personified, who supposedly has got tremendous amounts of money stashed away in the U.S. and Europe. So um, better, better uh, Ahmadinejad than the mullahs. I guess that's the bottom line there. Well, there you go again, being a Muslim extremist. Uh, <laughs> You don't support Al Qaeda and you don't support the Mullahs. You're a bad guy. You would be pro America. You got to support Al Qaeda nowadays, Webster. How about thank, that? Thank you, Lily. I'm sorry to Keith and others. We're just out of time. Webster, be safe over there, and we'll hopefully talk to you in the next few days as things develop. Uh, as you uh, will stare out on the Mediterranean while the peace offerings are given to you by the Peace King Obama. You ought to be very thankful for his loving peace. Webster, thank you so much. Okay. Bye bye.